Hello, welcome to my video. Um, I've been looking at the, I've been trying to make the thing faster, but one of the, one of the, um, unfortunately, the cache, the time it takes to get things out of the cache is probably the same time it takes to do the functions, because what it is, these functions are the, the, the too fast. So, caching them, Is the is the same speed, but what I can do is I can put up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a lot of them together, and then cache cache them. However, if I cache them separately, there isn't a speed increase because because the function the the functions are too fast, and the time it takes to get something out the cache is the same time it takes to, for example, if I do. Legal moves. Time to take it to get that out of the cash will be the same time as getting it. Or if I go to Val Win, this one here, the time it takes for me to go and do that function and get the results, it's the same time it takes to get it out of the cash. The cash, the cash isn't fast enough. So um, there's a way to speed it up. For instance. Instead of co putting this in the cache, what I'll do is I'll put both of them in the cache and get both of them out, so that will sort of double the speed. Well, that's the only way I'll be able to do it. Okay, so because the cache is like that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a different. I'm going to I want to add something to the evaluation function at this stage before I do any caching, and then what I'll do is. I'll add this to the cache, that to the cache, and the new evaluation function to the cache. And that way, it will be a big speed increase. Okay. And next thing I noticed is, when the program isn't optimized, that's when, that is when the cache improves it a lot. But if the program's optimized, the cache hasn't got much use really. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, in this video, I'm going to, what I want to do is, I'm going to show you an example, but first I have to set the game to be slower. So I'm going to set the depth to 4 so that it's quick. Manual is false because I want to play a game. Okay, I want to play a quick game as quick as possible. But I'm going to set the board to uh, 19 by, say, 10. I'm going to play 6 in a line. I'm going to make it go first and I'm going to show you what I'm trying to do. Oh, I didn't press reset. So this is six in a line. Now I'm going to stop him from winning. So from here, he can't win. Even though he's going in the center, he won't be able to win. And now I've got my six in a line, so I've won it. Okay, so even though it was going in the center, um he still wasn't able to put up much resistance. So what I want, I want I want I want more resistance from him. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna create a different evaluation function and what this evaluation function would do is it will score the board based on three on the line. Mm -hmm. So what it will do is look at the board and say, has yellow got three in the line? How much three in the lines have you got? And how much colours are other guns? It's going to take the difference and it's going to give a score based on the player. Mm -hmm. So if it's red to play, it will give red score for three in the line versus yellows. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get a number and it will include that into the evaluation function. But... 
it will only affect this so therefore it won't it won't have anything to do with that it won't affect that and it won't affect that it will only affect drawn positions and also this is the this is the reason why I have to keep these bigger numbers the value is not going to exceed 100 so what it is when it's a draw it's going to add a number like so for instance it might be 20 or it might even be 10 or even 5 okay but it won't exceed 100 because if it exceeds 100 it's going to start interfering with these results here and I don't want it to interfere with this so what it is these results here will take different precedence over that evaluation because these will give higher numbers and these numbers will be dwarfed by these numbers so these will take precedence okay now before I start I've removed something from here and I have to put it back in because the code will um, if, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first put it in and then I talk about it. I can't. Okay, I'm a bit confused here. Here, this one, let's put it. That loop there, I took some code out and I have to put it back. And all this code does is. When there's no moves that when there's no moves, that means it's going to return the score for the position. Now, I could make it return zero here, but that wouldn't be good enough because now we're adding a different value evaluation function, so I have to return the score. Okay, so it returns the score here, it works out the score. If it comes through all of this and then there's no and there's no moves, that means there's no more moves that can be played. So therefore, if I don't put this in, it will create a bug and it won't work properly. However, it won't show up in certain. It would only show up if we play onto the last move and then we see the bug. Okay. So I've put that in. I put that back in, and that should fix that bug that existed. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, whenever the position is to draw, like here, I'm going to get it to trace a different number between, between minus 100 and 100. And this number will, be a, will tell how much free the line. So what it means is the computer, instead of just going up and down, It will try and get, it will try to get three pieces together. It will try to get shapes like this, for instance. That's a square. And it will try to get shapes like this instead of just being predictable. However, the reason why we're doing this is the game, we haven't got enough classes in power to see all the way to the end. So we've got to sort of play moves that play moves that stop short term losses if you know what I mean okay so that's what this is for and the good thing about this as well is this evaluation function is going to be quite slow so when I put cash on it there's going to be a big speed up because it's a very slow function okay I'm going to start doing it now and all we want to do is we want to count how many how many times three in a board is three in a line is this on the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this first. I'm going to rename that to it. Okay. And what I want to do with this is. I want to create a result. Mm. 
Okay. So what I want to do is, I want to get rid of that line. It's not required. I'm going to hard code this value in. Yeah. So I'm going to take this out. I don't need the line. I'm just going to hard code in three. I'm looking for three in the line. Okay. So all this is going to do is it's going to loop the moves. And it's not going to break out. So once it finds three in the line, it's going to carry on looking in all directions. And it's going to give a score. It's going to increment this each time it finds three in a row. And it's going to return a number. Okay, so that, well, that's what that's going to do. It's going to return a number. So that, so if you, if you say it's 10, that means it found 10 free in the lines. Okay. Another thing I want to point out, if I had free in the line, I'm going to, if I had free in the line, like one, two, three, it would go to this position. It would say that's free in the line. It would go to there and that would be free and it would go to there and that's free. Mm -hmm. So the, so, so the total number it would return is three, but that's okay because for the other color it will do the same thing, so it balances out, so it doesn't really matter. So, that is the first part we created three in a line, and now we need uh, find we need to copy this and modify it. So let me just do that, and let's call this fine. We just call it fine three in a row. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take this middle bit out, and then we're going to replace it with something else. So again, we do let. Okay, so we want to collect the scores from the other function that we've done. So what I want to do is I want to take this middle bit out. All of this can come out. What am I doing? Let's just take that out. Right, if board convert to equals us, what we want to do is we want to get the result and we want to, um, we just want to add all the scores together. So I'll just place that in. So it's just that. And then all we're going to do is return the result. Okay. So what this will now do is it was this would this would hunt it will look at every single square on the board. It will look at every single square, it will look at every single direction of each square, and then it will count how much three in the lines are available to it. And then it's gonna to total up the score. Okay. And I'm going to create a other function that is going to use them too. I'm going to paste this in to save a bit of time. I'm going to explain it when I finish. So what this is going to be, the hero is us. So the hero score will be us there. The villain would be the other person that we're playing against, whoever that is. Uh, did I spell villain right? Bill, I can't spell, I can't spell. <laughs> Villain, Bill, what is it, one L? I'm sure. I can't 
Oh, spell. Villain, villain, how do you spell villain? If I can't spell, how, can, how do I know that's wrong? That's the thing. There you are, V A I N. Right, there you go. Villain. So that's what I'm right now. So what I'm going to do is hero score, which is also villain score, and we're going to take the difference and we're going to divide by 100. The reason why I'm divided by 100 is I want it to be less than 100 at all costs. So to be honest, I could even divide it by, I could even divide it by 1,000, I can divide it by 20,000, I could divide it by 100,000. As long as it's less than, as long as it's less than 100, oh, I'm happy. Okay. So that's done. So what I'm going to now do is, I'm going to put this function in, but I'm not going to activate it. I'll show you why. So what I'm going to do is, it's going to go in here. And what it's going to do is, start. Instead of returning zero, we're going to return that there. Okay. Well, that's going to give us some new problems. And I'll show you what they are. Because we are returning, because if I sh show you the program here, this line, if score not equal to zero, that should be like that. If score not equal to zero, so therefore, it's not, therefore that's going to throw us off. So what we need to do is, we need to set it so that if the score is less than zero, or minus zero, minus, if the score is, between minus 100 and 100, just set it to zero. Otherwise, set it to the value. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna create a function to do that. And it's a really simple function, and it's called nearly, and that's what it does. It gets a value. If the value is more than minus 100 and less than 100, set it to zero or set it to the value, okay? And what that would do, that would help us because we changed that, because we, we haven't changed it yet. We haven't changed it yet because we can see it's blotted out, but when we do change it, it's going to break other things, so we have to fix them other things. So what is it going to break? It's going to break human move. So if I go to human move, okay, this is going to break. Because it's got if result eval not equal to zero. Okay, so what I have to do is, oops, this dot underscore nearly, I'll just wrap that in it, and that's all I have to do. But I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look and be sure. Let me have a look again. Okay, I'm gonna have to want to do that. I'm gonna have to think about this a bit. Okay, I'm thinking where do I do it? 
Let me solve. Okay, I need to do it here. This dot. If I do it here, I'll be better off. So that if if I change it there, that will change it there automatically and it will change it everywhere else. So that would mean the function will do the same thing. Okay, so that's changed. So I'm gonna get the so I'm gonna have to go to get computer move, but I'm gonna change it there as well. Also always we're just gonna the game's gonna break. If I don't change it, let me have a look. It's this one here. You see this one here? If I should have copied it, I should have copied it from there. So I just have to do that. And what that does is, this is val, if the position is drawn, it should be set to zero. So what this does is, when it comes here, it uses this and it says, if, if it's not equal to zero, then it thinks that someone's won. So because I put a valuation function on it, it's not going to be zero anymore. Sometimes it will be 0 0.1 or 0 0.01. So that will make it think that it's one. So I've got to put this nearly to stop it doing that. Okay, so let me just check. I've changed it. I've changed it there. And I've changed it there. So now, them two should behave exactly how they were before. Now, if I go back to this class here, I go to um. Oh I didn't give you good names. Here, it's it's got this legal move equals that, and then it tests the legal move. And what test does it do on it? As you can see, it's got if legal move if found not equal to zero. So again, it's used because I've adjusted it at other place. I don't have to do anything here. If you notice. As long as I make sure that the evaluation doesn't exceed 100, then everything should work fine. So I've now done that. I haven't activated the evaluation yet though. But I'm going to give it a little test. And to test it, I'm going to set it to manual. And that will just enable me to test something. So what I'm gonna do is oh, what happened there? I pressed I pressed it's a safety mechanism in the thing I'm using, but I just have to press refresh. Hopefully I've saved my changes. Right, so if I do force move. Can you say it moves? It's going to it's it's thinking it's a drawn position. So it's just playing the first move. And then it had to play that because it was defending against a loss. It could see a loss there, so it done that. Now as you can see, it defended a loss then. So can you see all this going? So you saw that all the what it went in now. I'm gonna now activate that by getting this eval win, and I'm gonna instead of returning zero, I'm going to return. I'm gonna return that number, and what I should that also do is perhaps I should console log it. In fact, I won't.
I should console log it off, I think. Let's go. I'm sure there's a different way. There must be some other way to do this, but anyway. Let's console log it to see what results we get. So we got that. So we just console log. Okay, so what we do is we're going to do that same game and we're going to see what results come up. Can't see it now. As you can see, they didn't do the same moves. It's now looking it's now looking at the score and it's thinking to itself, I need to get three in the line. And it slowed down a bit. Can you see how it's looking? See how it's trying to get, it's trying to bunch the pieces up together. It's not playing better moves, but it's, it beats itself. Anyway, it's not actually playing better moves, but what it's actually doing is, what it means is, when it can't see to the end, I won't, that trick that I used to beat it, I won't be able to use it and do that anymore, so you get a better game out of it. Because the computer will play it good. If I just said to it, let's go 20 moves deep, it would actually start playing good. But because I can't, I haven't got the process about to go 20 moves deep, it's going to start playing kind of rubbish. So I'm just, I'm just adding this so that we can get a better game against it. Now let's just do that. There, there's the evaluations. As you can see, they're, they're never going to breach 100. So if I play by myself now, so you can see there's a bug somewhere. There's a bug somewhere. Okay, now the bug is something to do with the human side. Because it only happens when the human and, it's, and the user, all I have to do is look at what I changed last. And that's the only thing I changed in here. So that underscore's missing. So that's the only thing that was missing. And if I try it now, it's working. So what I want to do is I want to I test some scores without winning. So as you can see, it's got 0 0.01 because red has got red has got three. So if I get make him get another three, it's got 0 0.04. So what it counts is counts that as one, two, three. So it counts that as three, four, five, six. So that should be counted as six. Okay, let's carry on. So I just want to get another three in a row. So if I go here, so now it's got me. So now, it's, now it's got seven because I played. So the the villain played. So now the villain is getting minus seven. So that's working fine. Now, we're gonna, if I go here, there's another three in the line. And now I've gone to point one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the board a bit bigger and reset it. And I just want to experiment with something. I just want to experiment with the scores.
So as you can see, I've got three, three, it, it counts that as one, two, three, four, five, six. And the villain hasn't got any. So, so can you see? So it's counting that square. So what, what it would do is, it would try to get a square, and from that square, when it sees deep enough, eventually it will find winners. Okay, so that position gives you 24. So I think, I think you have to divide it by 100. I'm not sure how that's going to ever reach to a high number, but anyway, it doesn't really matter whether it's 2.4 or 24. Okay. So this looks okay now. So it appears to be working. Now, this, this thing is very slow because what it does is it looks at every single square, then it looks at every single direction. So for one square, it would, it would look at the square and it would look at four directions and then it would look at the other, it wouldn't stop if it finds it. So what it is, it's very slow, however, in the next video, I will implement a cache that will speed it up considerably. Not considerably, but it will speed it up a lot. However, the measurements that we've done before, because we are now make because we are not playing the middle, it will probably slow it down. It will probably it's probably slow down. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna do another test. On the next video, before I add the cache, I'll have some new new figures to see how fast it is, and then I'll try and improve it. With the, then we can see what the cache does to it. Okay? Thanks for watching this video. In the next video, I'm gonna I'm gonna add the cache and do some testing. So until next time, bye.